Before we jump into today's show, join the Noti gang here at Chicago Bears now. Last week during the draft, we picked up over 1,000 subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Hope you like what you're seeing so far. The next step to make sure you never miss a video and stay tapped in, locked in to every Bears Now episode, the latest news and rumors, uh, is to turn on those notifications. So subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell and then select all. If you select all, I think the default is personalized. All will make sure uh, that you always get a notification when we publish an episode. With that being said, let's jump into this episode. Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. Get the best men's grooming products out there, including the Lawnmower 4.0, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, and much more at manscaped.com. Use promo code BEARS20 to get 20% off plus free shipping. All right, Mel Kuyper Jr. released his 2023 NFL draft grades for every team. And for the Bears, he handed out a B+. We'll kind of go through some of Mel's talking points with some of the different picks here. I'll kind of offer my analysis and and uh, kind of respond to what Mel is saying, whether I agree, disagree, uh, and then we'll kind of see where things conclude at the end of the video uh, as well. All right, but first, let's recap the Bears draft. Just kind of sprint through the picks here. Darnell Wright, after moving down a spot, picking up a future fourth, uh, the offensive tackle out of Tennessee. Busy day two, you get Jervon Dexter, the defensive tackle out of Florida, trade up from 61 against Tyreek Stevenson, the Miami corner, uh, and then uh, South Carolina defensive tackle Zach Pickens to start the third round. Fourth round, you get uh, Roshan Johnson, Tyler Scott. I mean, quite frankly, a two-round fourth or a two-pick combo on day three in one round of Roshan and Tyler Scott. I mean, that's that's pretty damn good. Noah Sewell, not a huge need, but uh, kind of a BPA situation, I would say, there. Uh, Minnesota corner, Terrell Smith there in the fifth round. Really good athletic traits and then uh, had some injuries, which is why he fell. Travis Bell, early in the seventh round, great story. First player ever to be drafted out of Kennesaw. Saw State, uh, then uh, Stanford safety Kendall Williamson, who should project to have some special teams value uh, early on if he's able to make this roster. All right, first of all, Kuyper factored in trading the number one pick in his grades with the Bears, which I think is very important, by the way. It's a di direct correlation with how this all went for Chicago. He says the Bears received a spectacular haul when they traded down from number one with the Panthers adding picks number nine and 61, plus a 2024 fourth in a or first and a 2024. 25 second rounder and wide receiver DJ Moore. They got help for now and later, setting themselves up to fill crucial needs in this draft. You look back at that trade, kind of concise it all in here. Uh, some of that started to be filled. They ended up, uh, they got DJ Moore, obviously. They got Darnell Wright. That 61st pick, they used to move up for Tyreek Stevenson, filling uh, a corner need you needed opposite of Jalen Johnson. And now we'll see what happens with the first next year from Carolina and with the second in 2025. Uh, I would say so far, you have gotten pretty good return by trading down from number one. You can't ignore the DJ Moore trade. You just can't because uh, when you factor in these draft grades, because trading the number one pick to land a top wide receiver for Justin Fields when this free agent market receiver was bad, I think is critical, especially considering Moore's contract is very manageable. Plus, you get the extra draft capital. That should factor into grading this draft, in my opinion. So, uh, now Mel Kuyper starts talking about the selections. Darnell Wright, uh, the pick at number uh, 10. Uh, he wrote 9 there. It was actually 10. They moved down from 9 to get him. He said, I matched this one in my two-round mock draft, uh, mostly because of its gaping void at right tackle. Right is the best right tackle in the class. I agree with that. 333 pound lineman who started 42 games in college. He's ready to play right now. Got to play some right, left tackle in college. Certainly played better at right tackle, especially here in 2022. And that was your biggest need, plug and play. And if the Bears were interested in keeping Braxton Jones at left tackle, drafting Darnell Wright made sense. Now, who knows? Maybe Ryan Poles, the staff, has interest in uh, putting Darnell Wright at left tackle and flipping Jones to right. Time will tell. I think it'll look like this, though, from left to right uh, when week one is here. And Darnell Wright fits the athletic traits that Ryan Poles likes. His arms are almost 34 inches long. That's a check. 6'5", 330, good size. Uh, but the athletic traits, I mean, just over a 5 flat 40. Uh, the 20 yards split, the 10 yard was good. Uh, good enough or, you know, you see the explosion with the vertical and broad. Uh, and you read the story uh, that the Athletic put out today. Adam Johns did a great job of they put him through this 
crazy workout that really sold him on being their pick, uh, he aced that test. Uh, protecting Fields is priority number one. That, that was the priority going into the offseason, uh, was protecting him and getting him some more weapons. The Bears have done both. So from that standpoint, uh, you got to be pretty pleased with what they did in this draft and what they did in this offseason. Are you happy with the Darnell Wright pick? Type H for happy or type U for upset. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy with it. It's a solid pick. Uh, he's got a guy that can help you right away. And I think uh, while this team is still in a rebuild and building for the future, getting guys that can help now helps you for the future as well. All right. Kuiper on the day two picks here. Obviously, Javon Dexter was the first one there. He said, I was more down on two of its day two picks, as I mentioned Friday, but I get building through the trenches. It's just that both Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens were around early based on my rankings. Some of this had to do with getting ahead on the defensive tackles early in a thinner than normal class, but I'm grading each class on value, and so the Bears have to get dinged. He didn't mention Tyreek Stevenson. I think he probably liked that pick, but look, I had some of the same sentiment uh, with uh, Dexter and Pickens. I thought it was a little early, but again, Again, my big board is different than polls. Uh, I knock those grades a bit, but if they reach their potential, they can really take off. More on those selections in a moment. But first, let's talk about our sponsor today. That is Manscaped. Their men's grooming products, including the Beard Hedger, uh, which is their newest product in the last couple of months that they launched. Uh, it's been a game changer for me. I love using their beard oil on a daily basis. The beard shampoo and conditioner keeps the beard nice and luscious. And of course, the trimmer is excellent as well. The Pro Kit comes with a bunch of products, starting with the Beard Hedger itself. Say goodbye to multiple guards. No more filling up drawers with unnecessary attachments. This is on uh, a 20, this has 20 links different links on one attachment on the product, which is nice. You just rotate it around and whatever length, however much you want to trim, you can do so. Uh, big fan of that. Big fan of the comb, the uh, the um, the brush. You get the beard balm, the shampoo, the oil, uh, the conditioner. all comes together in a pro kit. I've gone through several beard trimmers in my adult life and just all these attachments you get, they wear down over a while. Not this one. It's absolutely fantastic. Get 20% off with promo code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. That link and promo code will be in the description of this video. So back to the Dexter and Pickens pit. While I agree with Kuiper, I thought it was a little early for each one. Uh, you look at these relative athletic scores, which is something that really stands out with this Bears draft. They're going high upside. Uh, you know, guys who really stand out athletically and believing in the coaching staff to get the most of them. Dexter, 9.53 out of 10 among defensive tackles since I believe the 80s. Uh, really athletic there. Zach Pickens, same deal. Not quite as high, 9.22, but still very, very highly graded. Really, he's only getting dinged there because of his weight. Uh, but for a three-tech, which is probably what he'll play on the defense, maybe even the occasional edge spot, uh, the weight's really not a factor there. Uh, the explosion is a factor, and that's where he's really excellent. The difference... Uh, or the downside, I should say, is the production. Kind of underwhelming their past two years of college football each. Uh, you know, Pickens had six and a half sacks the past two years. Not bad, but not, you know, uh, substantial. Dexter, four and a half. Uh, you know, a big knock on him on tape is he's a little slow to get off the ball. Some of that is read and react. That's what they had him do there. But still, at times, he was slow to get off the ball. I mean, that's something that you know, can you coach that out of him? Can he time the snap better and really react and win the ball a snap right away and just get off and go? So, um, look, the athletic traits are here, but let's be honest, the Bears are projecting a bit. I mean, Ryan Poles is banking on Matt Eberflus and his staff to get the best out of Jervon Dexter and Zach Pickens. Now, Maybe they don't turn into superstars like their athletic traits could suggest they could become, but can they become good players? If you get good players in the second round, you're doing well. Give me two starters here. Like, if you do that, great picks. If you get one high-level starter and one, you know, rotation guy, I would say that's good as well. What you don't want is both these guys to end up being backups. And if I look at the depth chart right now, I think I still got to see them earn their place in the starting lineup, right? I mean, Andrew Billings was mostly a starter last year for Vegas and played pretty well, so I'm going to keep him in there. Justin Jones wasn't great, but for this defensive line, he was the best you had, so I'm going to keep him in there. Dexter and Pickens have got to earn their way, and it's probably going to take them time. They'll have to earn starting roles. And by the way, if they're not starters week one, that does not mean these were bad picks. Now, if they're not starters by later in the season or at least by year two, then yeah, that's a concern. I mean, you took them in the second round. If they're not starting by year two, then uh, you probably missed there. So time will tell. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Better pick in on day two at defensive tackle. Type GD for Jervon Dexter. Type ZP for Zach 
Pickens. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. All right, day three we go. Mel Kuyper on Roshan Johnson and Tyler Scott. Running back Roshan Johnson played behind B. John Robinson at Texas, but Johnson probably would have started at most other FBS schools. Not probably. He probably would have started for about 95 other ones. He is powerful between the tackles. Tyler Scott at 133 is a slot wideout who runs after the catch like a tailback. By the way, Scott can play some outside as well. Uh, where Dexter and uh, Pickens might have been considered a tick early, according to you know us on the outside looking in, I would say the opposite is true here. Roshan Johnson and Tyler Scott were great value picks uh, that both could have gone on day two, like Dexter and Pickens did. Johnson, uh, in limited opportunities, less than 400 carries in four years at Texas, had a, almost 2,200 rushing yards, caught the ball 56 times, 26 total touchdowns. Uh, and the advantage for Chicago here is there's not a lot of tread lost here because he did serve as a number two back because he was playing behind superstar B. John Robinson. I've got him plugged in as RB2 right now, and there's a lot of people out there that think he could start. Uh, he's very similar to David Montgomery in a lot of ways. Breaks a lot of tackles, forces missed tackles. He's a one-cut back, plays physical. He's a leader as well. I mean, I keep reading uh, how much the Bears rave about this kid's character, and look, that was on display early on in college when he selflessly moved from quarterback to running back for the betterment of the team ended up staying there. The RB competition is going to be heated. Uh, here's the only thing I am pretty confident in. Trust in Ebner's in trouble. Like, I, I don't see a path for him to make this roster, but Khalil Herbert, you can't just assume you're going to start. Roshan, you got to earn your keep as a rookie. Deontay Foreman, I know you ran for 900 yards last year after they traded Christian McCaffrey. Buckle up, kid, because uh, you got Roshan in town now. It's going to be a lot of competition there, and I am very excited to see it play out. Now, you look at Tyler Scott. Um, listen, we talked about it in our Bears News and Rumors segment this week uh, earlier here on the live show. If you're watching live, uh, buckle up, Bayless Jones, because uh, you could be on the hot seat. Tyler Scott is a big play machine. You see the 16.6 yard per catch there. How about this? Crazy stat alert. Look at these numbers right here. Tyler Scott averaged 44.6 yards per touchdown catch in college. He is a big play machine. And by the way, those are not all deep balls. Sometimes it's taking a slant to the crib. It's a bubble screen where he's making guys miss. I mean, he does it all. Uh, obviously, he's only five, you know, he's just under 5'10", uh, 180 pounds. So, you know, he's not built like DK Metcalf or something like that. But you're seeing more and more of this in the NFL. These 5'9", these 5'10 guys who are just so tough to tackle in space, who can stretch teams vertically. I mean, look at Darnell Mooney at his uh, structure. He's able to go up and get it, high point the football, challenge teams downfield. Tyler Scott can do a lot of that as well. I am fired up to see this kid play. I think the value of him and Roshan on day three was terrific. Better day three pick. Type RJ for Roshan Johnson or type TS for Tyler Scott. Um, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. I think both these guys are day one contributors. By the way, I didn't even mention special teams. Both will contribute in that regard early on. Further on day three, Mel Kuyper on Noah Sewell and Terrell Smith. Linebacker Noah Smull, Sewell excuse me, was a tackling force in college, and now he'll get to try to blitz past his brother Panay, who plays for the Lions, of course. Terrell Smith is my 14th-ranked cornerback, and the Bears get him around later than I had him going. So I think what you're seeing here, quality depth for me, I think from day one. I think Sewell, he might even compete to be your third linebacker. Poor Jack Sanborn. The guy did everything he could ask last year, but Bears have invested at linebacker with Edmonds, Edwards, and now drafting uh, – uh, Noah Sewell, uh, you know, you get Terrell uh, uh, Smith, who has uh, really good uh, athletic traits. Uh, you know, we're, again, we talked about day two where maybe you, you went, you reached just a tick, at least from our standpoint, at defensive tackle. Day three, you got some BPAs, man. Best players available, the guys that can help you in multiple regards. Here's Kuiper on the Bears' overall draft. I like what GM Ryan Poles is building in Chicago. In the 2024 draft capital he acquired, uh, combined with another step forward with quarterback Justin Fields, uh, means this team will challenge in the NFC quickly just not this season. And, you know, that's up for debate, right? That's just his outlook. Something to consider, and I've said this, I don't think this is a title contender right now. But while this is a multi-year rebuild, it does not mean the Bears can't compete for a playoff spot in 2023. Remember, this team went 1-8 and eight in one-score games last year. You go 4-4, four and four, you're a seven-win team. Uh, and that was last year when this team had way less in the cupboard. Now you got more pieces to work with. The schedule should be even more manageable than it was a year ago. Justin Fields should take another step forward. You've got more weapons. Um, 
NFC North could be more manageable with Aaron Rodgers out of the division. I'm not going to sit here and say this team's going to go 12-5. and five. I don't believe that. But could they be in the mix in December with a chance to make the playoffs? I think that is much more likely than this team only winning three games like it did this year. I'll just leave it at that for now. Will the Bears make the playoffs in 2023? Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. I mean, right now, I'd probably lean no, uh, but uh, let's see the schedule next Thursday. Let's see if they add any more pieces this offseason. And listen, I would not rule it out by one stretch of the imagination. Make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, kind of long, drawn-out analysis there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want more coverage, we will continue to bring you guys the latest Bears news and rumors. So hit that sub button and turn on notifications.